talk a bit more then about what's happening in Ukraine at the moment. Angela Diffley, our foreign editor, is with me. And Angela, what did you make of what we saw in that report in terms of this question of whether or not Ukraine is getting bogged down as we approach the second anniversary of the war? Yeah, obviously, um, I'm unable to say whether a Krinky has or has not fallen to the Russians. It's uh, even those who are monitoring this very clear, carefully are not uh, clear exactly what's what's happened. We do know, of course, that recently they captured Avdivka. And we know that uh, the Ukrainians summer counteroffensive about which we heard so much to try and sever that land bridge mm -hmm. between Russia and Crimea failed. We know that the Ukrainians are losing a lot of soldiers. It's estimated that there are four to five Russian soldiers uh, for every one Ukrainian soldiers. They are also burning through ammunition and weapons, much of it supplied by the West. And of course, that is leading to a drop in morale within Ukraine. We heard earlier from our correspondent, Gulliver Crag, that there is a sense that uh, morale is dropping in Ukraine. And coming up to the two-year anniversary, uh, contrasting that with when Zelensky was celebrated around the world, when morale was high, when they astonished the whole world by this extraordinary spirit of resistance, and there was a lot of belief in what they might achieve. Now, set against that, of course, it is in Russia's interests to say that they have captured Krynki. We are coming up to the second anniversary, and uh, there are elections coming up in Russia. So it is in their interests to uh, trumpet some sort of uh, success there. We do know that it seems uh, uh, experts think that Russia lost uh, vast numbers of soldiers in its capture of Avdivka recently. So it's, it's difficult to say. It looks very much like a stalemate right now. A stalemate, you say then, Angela. Does that suggest that Ukraine might be thinking about changing its military strategy now? Yeah, the problem with a stalemate is that a stalemate benefits the Russians automatically mm. because uh, it, it erodes Western support for Ukraine. If it is seen to be a war that is unwinnable in the West, then it will be harder to convince uh, Western governments to subsidise it and to send uh, weaponry. Uh, recently, Zelensky changed his top uh, general. He has so far resisted, Zelensky, calls for a massive uh, recruitment drive because he knows it's very unpopular. A lot of those who wanted to fight for Ukraine signed up two years ago, but they are very much in need of, of rest and respite now. And he is so far resisting a major drive. But there is an idea now that... Uh, Ukraine is now moving towards a defensive posture in order to retrain its soldiers and to uh, manufacture more weaponry and more ammunition as well in that time. Perhaps continue with missile and drone attacks on the Russian uh, Black Sea Fleet uh, in Crimea, perhaps continue with that. And all of this perhaps with a view to another offensive in 2025 if things go to plan. It's felt that that is more or less the position of uh, the Ukrainian uh, leadership at the moment. All of this, of course, depends massively on whether they will get weaponry, mm -hmm. ammunitions, military aid from the US. And if Donald Trump gets in, that is very much in doubt. Huge questions indeed. Thanks very much, Angela Diffley, for us there.